On this channel, we normally talk about the research into conditions like ME-CFS or long COVID or postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome uh, in an accessible way, as well as uh, myself sharing various treatment strategies that I have tried or am trying in order to improve my condition as an ME-CFS patient. But I also offer consultations privately to patients with these kinds of illnesses and in this video I'm going to talk all about that, uh, how it works, how much it costs, the kind of topics that I tend to discuss with people, uh, and about why it is that you might wish to work with me. There's also a document with the full details about this service as well as how to uh, contact me to avail of it on my website patrickusher.com. So let's first of all talk about how this service actually works. So it's rather different from a typical consultation service where someone might meet for an hour one-to-one -to, -one to discuss things. Although I do have uh, appointments like that sometimes, typically I work via voice messaging. And so basically I conceive of this service as operating in rounds. And so each round involves you, sending me the context and the questions that you wish me to consider and me responding with a voice message or sometimes with email uh, to answer the questions that you have asked me. And so that particular process of you sending me context and questions and me responding, that is one round. And sometimes that's enough, but at other times people then come back with more questions, more aspects of their situation and so there's another round of consultations. And things can really continue in that way until uh, you as the client are satisfied. Now I have found that there are three key advantages to working in this way in comparison to having a, a standard one-to-one -one consultation. The first is that when someone is chronically ill, it's often not possible to show up at a specific hour on a specific day due to fluctuations in the illness. And so by doing it in this way instead, it respects the ups and downs of chronic illness. Secondly, it allows for much more reflection time and prioritization time. When you're having a one-to-one -one discussion with someone, after it's ended, you might think, oh, I wish I'd asked them that, or I wish I hadn't spent so much time talking about that when I really wanted to talk about this. And sometimes your subconscious works on things in the meantime. So the advantage of doing it this way is it allows more time for reflection, both for you and for me, so that the most important things can be discussed and that everything you want to be discussed can be tackled. And the final uh, advantage for doing it this way is the cost. When you book a one-to-one -one session with someone normally, you're committing to paying for a whole typically hour of that person's time. But with this, you only pay for the time necessary to, for me to reflect on and to respond to your queries. Now let's move on to the kinds of areas that I normally talk to people about. These are the sorts of things that I have particularly studied, that I have particularly dealt with in my own journey with chronic illness, uh, and which I feel particularly qualified through the experience of life to offer advice on. And basically there are eight areas that I particularly discuss with people. First and foremost relates to brain retraining and neuroplasticity. So this is where uh, we're considering the maladaptive stress response that is very common in illnesses like ME-CFS and POTS and long COVID. This excessive sympathetic state, flight or fight dominance, um, mismatch between sympathetic and parasympathetic and so on. And in this case, I can offer, I can teach techniques that can help to modulate and to bring down this excessive stress response. So if you're someone who's suffering with things like hypervigilance, you know, being stressed about everything, being sensitive to noise, light, smell, if you have excessive adrenaline release, if you have a freeze response, your muscles are constantly tensing up, your difficulties focusing, you basically feel like you are traumatized, then I can teach techniques that I've developed myself to help with de-traumatizing the nervous system. And those techniques are both uh, 
uh, cognitive based, also behavioral based, and they are concerned with de-traumatization, they're concerned with uh, removing the freeze response, increasing the capacity to pay uh, sustained, to have sustained attention and concentration, and also behavioral techniques to uh, bring down a traumatized state. So I teach all of those things. But also, sometimes people have questions about other brain retraining programs. Now, I personally have experience with the DNRS and with ANS Rewire. Sometimes people are doing other programs and they want to ask me, what do I think of uh, X, Y, and Z aspect of that program? You know, do I really have to do it like this? And so I can also offer advice on those kinds of questions. And also on the limits of brain retraining. A, a, a theme on this channel is that it is far too simplistic and in fact unacceptable at every level, to reduce illnesses like ME-CFS to just a hypersensitive nervous system problem. It is simply blatantly untrue. And so sometimes people are working away on the brain retraining and feeling like why aren't they making progress when actually there may be some secondary physical dysfunction that needs to be addressed. So these kinds of topics are also things that I like to talk about. The second major area that I often talk to clients about relates to the research. I follow the research very actively. I read at least summaries of most of the papers that come out. Uh, I'm also, um, I also follow very closely in particular the research of Professor Carmen Scheibenbogen and Professor Klaus Wirth from Germany. And these two, in addition to a team at Charité University Berlin, have worked on big picture um, hypotheses uh, relating to ME-CFS that, that really draw upon all the pre-existing findings pretty much and say, you know, as, and which then present a big picture view of what the illness is. And I personally find this research to be very convincing. And so I know about that in much more detail. And so I can often uh, discuss this research with people, clarify it, apply it to someone's particular situation, and things like that to help demystify ME-CFS and long COVID for someone. The third particular area that I often talk to people about relates to issues of low blood volume and the thirst that it causes. Now, I have written a whole book about the potential causes of thirst in ME-CFS, long COVID and POTS, and about why I believe that this symptom has been historically misdiagnosed as psychogenic water drinking. This is a medical hypothesis that I have written and published as a free download, and you can find the link for that below. I am now working with a couple of academics as well on hypotheses papers in relation to my uh, research in this regard. But this is a symptom that does affect some people very badly. And once upon a time, it affected me at the most extreme end. In fact, I was hospitalized with life-threatening hyponatremia or low blood sodium. But I have successfully managed to resolve this symptom. And I know that for some people who are stuck in the cycle of vicious thirst that is common in these conditions, it can get really bad. So I can offer advice on how to get out of this, as well as to understand thirst physiology as it likely relates to ME-CFS. The fourth area that I can often help people with relates to blood washing procedures. Now, not all of them, but particularly relating to help apheresis and to immunoabsorption. Now, these are procedures that are typically performed in Germany, although help apheresis is also available in Cyprus and Switzerland, which are able to, in the, in the case of help apheresis, remove the microclots that are common in these illnesses and in, the relation, and in relation to immunoabsorption to remove the autoantibodies that are common in the illness. Now, not only can I help explain the research around these problems to clients, but I, can, but I have also myself had personal experience with seven sessions of help apheresis. And so sometimes people want to talk to me if they're considering about doing the treatment, about what to expect, about practicalities, even about my experience at the specific clinic that I went to in Bayreuth in Germany, and things of that nature. The fifth area that I often talk about with clients is how to build up more safely, how to build up your stamina more safely. And this is an interesting one because, of course, with ME-CFS, it's an illness of exercise intolerance and 
Exercise can be very dangerous, and if you do too much, you crash and experience post-exertional malaise. However, I have found, from my own personal experience, and as someone who is, has built up from a very low base, for the first three years of my illness, I was really down at about one and a half to two and a half thousand steps per day, typically two thousand. And so I was essentially housebound. And I've also had a period um, uh, of six weeks where I was mainly bedridden. And so I know what it involves to get stronger from a very low base. Now, of course, if you do too much too quickly, or if you try and go about it like a normal person, it won't work. You will just crash and become ill. But I have found that there are ways of modifying exercise that can make it much more manageable and which allow you to build up much more safely. Yes, it requires patience, and no, it's not uh, uh, the answer to the illness, but there's a huge difference between someone with ME-CFS who can only walk for two minutes and someone who can walk for half an hour or an hour. The quality of life of the person in the latter situation is far better. I myself have managed to get to a situation now where I can walk between eight to 9,000 steps per day and sometimes even 10,000 steps. This is such a huge difference from where I used to be and it's thanks to applying specific principles which I'm very happy to teach you uh, in consultations. The sixth area that I uh, often talk about in consultations relates to diet and in particular to ancestral ways of eating. So I've studied this an awful lot. I have read books by food anthropologists who go and visit various tribes and report their findings. And I've listened to hundreds upon hundreds of podcasts at both a theoretical level and hearing about the personal experience of uh, people who have healed through diet, various conditions. And in particular, I'm interested in a general framework for how to think about um, diet from an ancestral point of view. And that approach sort of involves a more omnivorous way of thinking about diet, which works very well for some people. But I'm also very interested in the more specific applications of the carnivore diet as well. I myself am a 95% carnivore and I have found this to be very helpful. I've listened to a lot of the main names in the field uh, in relation to carnivory. And I've also thought about why does carnivory apply or why could carnivory help more specifically with ME-CFS, something that's not so often talked about uh, in the carnivore space. The seventh uh, topic is the Buteyko method. So this is a, a, pro a, a process developed by Professor Konstantin Buteyko, who uh, was a Soviet doctor who worked out that the more carbon dioxide the human body has, the healthier it is. In fact, something that's often not known or appreciated is that carbon dioxide is not just a waste gas. The more you have of it, the better you actually oxygenate because carbon dioxide acts as a kind of conduit for oxygen to be released. Now, the Bottega method, uh, popularized by people like Patrick McKeown in his book, The Oxygen Advantage, is frankly often a bit confusing and there can be a lot of areas to troubleshoot. Now, I've been interested in Bottega for years but I've been equally confused by it for years. I've studied with many different groups who actually teach quite different approaches. So I've been able to uh, gather a kind of broad view of all the different, or many of the different approaches to the Bottega method. So I'm happy to teach people techniques based on it. I'm happy to share my experience. I'm happy to answer questions. I've also learned a lot about how to help with the breathing biomechanically, and I can point people in the direction of helpful resources on this front. And finally, one of the main areas I talk about or with clients relates to T3 thyroid treatment. And so this is a kind of unusual tre treatment for hypothyroidism based on taking T3 rather than T4. So that's lyothyronine rather than lev levothyroxine. Um, and often T3 at quite high doses. And uh, this, uh, this is thought of as a way to overcome the specific kind of low T3 syndrome hypothyroidism that exists in ME-CFS. And I myself took T3 for two and a half years, able to talk to people about key issues relating to T3 treatment. But interestingly, I actually ultimately came off it and I think it was causing me some harm. And so I'm not as enthusiastic about it as a treatment as other people, but it's something that I can explore in more detail with people who are interested in that 
avenue. So those are the eight key areas that I have particularly learnt about during my uh, illness, uh, my journey with chronic illness, and which I feel best positioned to help talk to people about or clarify uh, things with people if they're interested in those particular areas. Of course, my service is not, um, is not limited to that. Sometimes people ask me questions that I then have to go and research. Uh, sometimes it's more related to more general things like mindset or uh, the spiritual aspects of recovery. Now let's talk about uh, how much this service costs and how that works. Now on my website, um, you can see exactly how it breaks down. So as not to bore the socks off you here, I won't go into it in absolute as much detail as there, um, but I'll just give you a couple of examples because basically what I charge for is uh, are two things. Number one, time to reflect on what you've sent me, and number two, my time in actually responding. And uh, how much the first thing costs depends upon how much you send me, it's a kind of sliding scale, and how much the um, it takes how much it costs for me to send you back uh, a voice message simply depends on how long the voice message is. So I charge one euro per recorded minute of voice message. That's one dollar and ten cents. And, um, you know, I try to keep it concise. If there's a lot of questions, obviously the voice message will be longer, but um, it does depend on what you're asking me. So to give you an example, let's say you just have one question you want to ask me and you send me an email with 300 words of context, your question, and I respond with a voice message of eight minutes. In that case, the whole, all of that would just cost 16 euro 50, which is slightly under 18 dollars, eight euro 50 for the consul, um, eight euro 50 for the reflection time, which is the minimum uh, for that, and then uh, eight euro for the message back. But let's say in contrast that you want to ask me a lot more, and you send me a message with a thousand words uh, and uh, you have five questions. Now, in, in the case of an email of a thousand words, uh, I would charge 20 euro to reflect upon that. And if I respond to, you know, to all of that, let's say with a voice message of 35 minutes, that would be 35 euro. So in total, 55 euro or around $60 for that round. So that's basically how it works. It costs as much as the work involves. I try not to go more than 30 to 40 minutes in response with a voice message. If there's a lot of questions, that would be more typical that I would respond with that length of time. Um, but also quite common that I might respond with a voice message between eight and 15 minutes as well. There's also some flexibility with um, this pricing structure. This is more a kind of guide, but sometimes situations present themselves where uh, a different pricing structure would be more appropriate. And also, if I don't know the answer to a question, um, you know, that would be reflected in the price as well. And so now I'm going to talk about why you might want to specifically work with me. First and foremost, I see this as a way to help people not have to reinvent the wheel. Um, when I first became ill with MECFS, although I knew some some things about the condition, I really was in the dark and I was fumbling around in that dark and it's quite scary not to know what's going wrong with your body when you're very ill. After about three years though, I started to really read the research and follow it very closely. And it was from doing that, uh, and in particular the work of Scheibenbogen and Wirth, that I felt that this was no longer a mysterious condition, that I wasn't, um, that, 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 that I was able to understand much better what was happening to my body. And that, um, and that really is half the battle, I think. And so I want to be able to turn that around now for other people and help them not feel so much in the dark either. It's one of the main motivations for this YouTube channel is that I want people to uh, feel that this is not a, 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 a strangely, a strange or mysterious illness, but something that they can actually understand and feel much more secure in knowing the kind of problems that exist in illnesses like MECFS. Now, second uh, reason that you might wish to work with me is that, well, you might say, well, look, Patrick, you haven't recovered yet. Why would I, why would I want to work with you? You're, you're still ill. And uh, why would I rather go and talk to someone who's got out of the woods? And that's fair enough. I, I'm not fully well yet. I've made an awful lot of progress, um, but I've got a long way to go. 
However, I think that progress does count for something. Uh, I was very ill. And um, as I mentioned earlier, you know, the first three years of this illness, I was down at 2,000 steps typically, but I also had long stretches bedridden. Um, and uh, I was very severely ill over th just a bit over three to three and a half years ago. In fact, uh, the illness was, not, was putting me in life-threatening situations. And I managed to get through that and I got better. From, and, and those episodes don't happen anymore. And uh, I've come up from, from this very low base. I'm now able to live independently, relatively well. It's not always easy, but once upon a time, that was an impossible, impossible scenario. Uh, as I said, on good days, uh, which are more often than not the case, I can walk eight, 9,000 steps, um, which for someone who used to be crashed by walking just two minutes continuously and be in bed for five or six days after that, it's an enormous achievement. So I've come a long way. And so I particularly, you know, if, if, if you're someone who is struggling in that more housebound level, I feel I can be particularly of help in hopefully, you know, helping you get better. And I can support people, you know, in, 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 in the process of actually trying to improve quality of life. And I think that's the way to think about it. I want to fully recover, but it may or may not ever be granted to me. So in the meantime, I want to get better. I want to have a better quality of life in two months than what I have now, so that my life can become more and more something that when I wake up in the morning, I actually want to get up and f enjoy what I can that day. And so I think that's you know also a very valid way of thinking about these conditions, especially when you've been ill for a while. And so I suppose I see myself uh, at this time as a wounded healer. The third reason why you might wish to work with me is that I'm actively involved in research. I've not just written this book about thirst, but I've been working with two academics who have read that book and have validated the ideas I've put forward as being important and worthy of further consideration. And so I'm now working on hypotheses papers with those academics. And so you can be, you can be rest assured that I'm coming from a position of uh, strength, at least when it comes to understanding certain aspects of the research into MECFS. Of course, I don't have a scientific background and I don't have a medical background. Uh, I was once upon a time a PhD student in ancient Greek and Latin and uh, uh, ancient philosophy. But those academic skills, such that I have with my brain fog these days, um, I, uh, I try to put to good use into understanding MECFS. And I've had to teach myself so many things bit by bit in terms of uh, learning about um, the, um, the different... Uh, you know, different terms, different aspects of human physiology, but I have managed to piece together a big picture understanding of these conditions. You know, my strength is not the nitty gritty of, um, you know, dysfunctions that might happen at a cellular, cellular level or this kind of thing. You know, I don't have that background, but I have been able to grasp an essential, the essential factors in understanding the research into these sorts of conditions. And fourthly, I'm very motivated at this time in my life to be a kind of bridge to convey the research to people and also to help turn around. Because you know, I've been ill now six years and I really, it's very meaningful for me at this point in my life to turn around the suffering that I've had and try and help other people in a similar situation so that they can improve their quality of life and have... Um, better tomorrows. So I'm very much driven uh, towards that aim at the moment. So that's everything. Um, it's quite amusing really. I thought I was going to do a 10 minute video but this is always how it is. So um, if you want to contact me for this you go to my website patrickusher.com. As I said there you'll find a document um, talking about th th this service, but really I've gone through everything in, in the video, just a few little things about pricing and so on in the document. Um, and you contact me there via the contact form and uh, we, can, we can set things up, get things going, and I look forward to working with you.